Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Tommy. I'm a human nutrition student and researcher at the university. What I do in this type of videos is to synthesize the classes I have at the university and then explain to you the best and most valuable information you need to know. This is the clinical nutrition series of videos and today we're going to continue by talking about the types of nutritional support. So let's begin. Okay, so types of nutritional support we have an important map here to access a nutritional support from a clinic, you must have a clinical condition. Once you have that, we can follow this important map, which is applicable in all areas. So the first thing we do is to ask if there is an indication of artificial nutrition. If there isn't, then we stop here. If there is an indication, we go on. The gastrointestinal tube is available. No, maybe because it is insufficient or contraindicated to use the gastrointestinal tube because of certain disease. Therefore, if the gastrointestinal tube is not available, we go straight to the parenteral nutrition. On the other hand, if the gastrointestinal tube is available, we ask, is the swallowing preserved? No, we cannot swallow correctly. We have dysphagia, for example. Then we go to the anterior nutrition. Preserved swallowing, yes then oral nutrition. And you must know that enteral nutrition and parenteral nutrition together create the mixed artificial nutrition. Oral nutrition is a way of artificial nutrition with supplements to indeed improve the digestion and the absorption of the nutrients to avoid the malnutrition. Now let's take a look at the enteral nutrition. So this one is the one we use some probes or catheters to reach the gastrointestinal tube and therefore give formulas that are highly digestible and highly absorbable to avoid or try to avoid the malnutrition. Ways of accessing the gastrointestinal tube. We say that the nozzle, so through the nose, is always better than through the mouth because in the oropharyngeal way we have the reflux. In the nozzle we don't have the reflux. So nasogastric also is always better than gastrostomy because it's easier to adapt, it's less invasive and uh, it just functions better and the majority of the times we're going to prefer the nasogastric than the gastrostomy even because the gastrostomy is for a longer term. So we have two types here, we have the probes and the catheters. So the probes are for the nasoenteric and nasogastric. So nasoenteric, naso nose, enteric, intestine. So a probe through the nose up to the intestine. Nasogastric, same, but gastric means stomach. So from the nose to the stomach. Catheter, gastrostomy, and jejunostomy. So stomy comes from stomia, which uh, means hole. So basically this is a hole in the abdomen that reaches the stomach. And this one, jejunostomy, is a hole in the abdomen that reaches the jejunum, which is a part of the intestine. The probes are made with PVC and they are a thin pipe, about 8 to 14 French. One French is a third of a millimeter. So as you can see, they are very thin. They create no reflux and the worst case scenario of it is that it may enter the lung when we are trying to apply the probe. On the other hand, we said that stomia means hole and uh, the catheters are meant for a long term and there is a lower risk of aspiration indeed because we're going to create a hole and not using the mouth or the nose. The probes and catheters used for levati, which means the cleaning of the area, are um, there for two to three days. The probes from two to three months and the catheters for six months. The ways of feeding are using bolus feeding, which means uh, like a meal. For example, we have breakfast, lunch and dinner. The semi-continuous is when we have a sack that contains the formulas and uh, we put it on top of the patient's bed. Therefore, the liquid drops and follows the catheter or the probe up to the stomach or the intestine. And then we also have the continuous, which is using a pump that speeds up the flow of the formulas to the interested location. And I have to mention that the when we do a geonostomy, we always have to put a pump, so a continuous way of feeding. 
And then, of course, you have to fill that sack with some formulas and they must be with certain calories and macros. So therefore, you have to evaluate the stress levels of a disease and the individual to calculate the calories and macros accordingly, because different diseases may have different levels of stress. So you calculate the basal metabolic rate, the physical activity level, which tends to be from 1.2 to 1.3. And then you also multiply that per the stress level of the disease. For example, the sepsis is from 1.3 to 1.5. And that way you can have more accurate nutritional requirements for the individual. So the formulas that are present are based on the patient's condition. If the patient's condition is normal, then we recommend a standard formula, which can be with or without fiber. If they are normal, but with a requirement of more calories, then there is a standard high calorie. With more protein, well, there is a standard high protein. If the patient has a gastrointestinal functional disorder, then we use the peptide formula. And again, if they require more calories, there is the peptide high calorie. And if they require more protein, there is the peptide high protein. And then there are also formulas for specific metabolic needs for diabetes, for kidneys, diseases, lungs, liver, and also formulas with pharmaconutrients. Of course, administrating a formula is not easy, so therefore we have to get some controls to avoid the complications. The controls are clinical, analytical and nursing controls and the complications are maybe food quantities intolerance, it is too much, or maybe there are some infections, the formula osmolarity is too high, therefore they may develop kidney problems in the future, interactions with drugs and also maybe there is too much fiber. And all these complications may lead to diarrhea, abdominal distension, constipation, bronchospiration and also other metabolic complications. Now let's take a look at the other one, the parenteral nutrition. Ways of accessing the circulation. Yes, because this is the one that goes to the blood directly. So we have two ways of accessing the circulation. The central way using the subclavian, so right here. And in children is used the umbilical. And the peripheral way of assessing the circulation is using the arm. We use the peripheral only when we are giving parental nutrition for short term, when the caloric needs are low and also the protein needs are low because this type of parental nutrition cannot really fulfill the, the whole needs of the individual because you cannot deliver a high osmolarity formula using a peripheral way. And also we use peripheral ways when uh, there are contraindications for the central one. So there are certain types of accessing the circulation. The short duration, uh, so less than 30 days, we can use the jugula, the subclavian, also the femoral, and uh, in hospitals, the drum which is from a peripheral to a central one. Medium duration, from two to three months, we use the PICCS that goes from peripheral to central, but it's not tunneled and uh, it is done at home. And the long duration, so more than three months, we use the household parental nutrition and it is tunneled. Then the formulas we give to the patients are made of three liters, more or less, and we have to calculate the calories and macros depending on the stress level again. And here it is much more accurate because these are monomers what we use here. Everything must be in monomers. So we don't give protein, we give amino acids. We don't give carbs, we give just glucose. We don't give fat, we give lipid emotions. And of course, no fiber because we don't need fiber in the blood, of course not. So the calories and macros are depending on the stress level. The low stress level are between 25 and 30 kilocalories per kilogram and one gram of protein per kilogram. Medium from 30 to 35 kilocalories per kilogram, which tends to be normal and from 1.2 to 1.5 grams of protein per kilogram. High stress levels over 35 kilocalories per kilogram and over 1.5 grams of proteins per kilogram of body weight. Again, everything must be in 
monomers. And you must know that the white envelope in the parenteral nutrition contains the lipids and differs from the serum. In this way of uh, nutrition, we must avoid at all costs the triglyceride and glycemia raise. If they go up, there is a problem. Also, the fact that glutamine is conditionally essential. And when we're using this type of nutrition, the parenteral one, chances are the individual is sick quite a bit and glutamine synthesis in the body is lowered so therefore we can consider it as semi-essential. Then we also have to provide arginine together with glutamine and all the omegas, omega-3, 6 and 9, essentiality indeed. And the parenteral nutrition, this is very important, is only for people with blood stability and a life expectancy of over two months. If they are not stable with their circulation and they are going to live less than two months, then we are not going to give them the parental nutrition. I know it may sound hard, but in the next video, we are going to talk about exactly that, the bioethics behind the clinic. So controls and complications of the parental nutrition. Controls, nursing controls, trays to check ev if everything is good internally, central nervous pressure, and also we use the albumin as a troll. Complications can be mechanical, metabolic and infectious complications because this thing, the catheter-related sepsis using the central parental nutrition is more common than wanted. To finish, I have to say that interior and parenteral nutrition are two ways of artificial nutrition and they can work together so we can have both at the same time. And this is called the Mixed Artificial Nutrition. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you understood everything I said. Remember to like, share and subscribe to my channel. You can find this diagram in the description down below by clicking the first link. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Ciao!